Nice fake uh, pictures you posted on the internet. Instagram's down, right? No, before it went down. Maybe that's why it went down. It probably, I broke you the internet. Broke the internet. <laughs>
really, really good from a bunch of performances that were I really, really enjoyed mm -hmm. to the story overall, which was very interesting because you you go into this, you'd think, oh, this is going to be a scary, right. jump scare right, kind right. of witch normal story that we've gotten in a few other, in like the, the Marathi one and all that kind of stuff, even though that changed as well. But you thought you were going to get more of that. This was... I shifted was, gears. This was more like the horror is... Uh, for the lack of a better word, the patriarchy, right? Yeah, yeah, very much. And it, it was very much a la, like, if you know the story of Frankenstein well, you'll know that it's a monster story, but it's really more about relationships with people and the relationship of the monster to the doctor. And it isn't just a scary story. It's, it's about relationships. And that was something where it took a real shift and it said... Yeah, we're, this is gonna be a scary movie, but I'm not focusing on the horror aspect of it. I'm, I'm focusing on the story of these people and a message about yeah. patriarchy. Yeah, right off the bat, it starts with a child marriage, right? Right. And so that gets your, automatically gets your blood boiling. Yeah. It's like, just gross. what is going on? But also, props to the filmmakers. They did it in such a non-judgy way. They were just like, here's a child marriage. This is yeah, all cause normal it, cause it was, in this world. In this world at this time, incredibly yep. normal. Yeah, and so like they, it wasn't like, ooh, everybody's like, this is a bad guy, he's marrying a child. Everybody's right. accepting it. Right. Not only the men, the women. Which, the that's something in and of itself, because this takes place in the late 19th and then mid 20th century, right? Yeah. One of the mistakes, I just watched a film uh, called Ophelia. Have you, do you know about this film? No. Yeah. It's a film that's a, t a different take on the story of Hamlet. It's, it's Hamlet from Ophelia's point of view, which is a great premise, but they blew it. And they've got a stellar cast and it's beautifully shot, but what they ruined primarily among other things was they took 21st century mindsets of women and put them into 16th century people. Gotcha. You can't do that. Yeah. You just can't do that unless yeah. you're gonna completely retell the story in the 21st century, yeah. but they didn't. They made it a period piece. And that's but. what I loved about this is they kept everybody living within the context of this time period that yeah. we're in. I, I really, really enjoyed that. I, Cause you know, like I said, it started off with the child marriage. And so that automatically just gets you infuriated. Yeah. And then the big twist right at the beginning was she thought she was marrying this other boy right and then Rahul Bose comes in and he's like yeah that's your brother-in-law yeah I'm your husband right and so you're immediately when that happened and I think it went to like Bobo or whatever yeah. the, the credits I was like I want all of them to die right it's, it's very much <laughs> if, familiar, if you're familiar with the story of Jacob from the Old Testament and his wives Leah and Rachel it's exactly what happens to Jacob he falls in love with the daughter serves for seven years to get her they get married and on the wedding night, the veil's taken off and it's the other sister. And the dad's like, psych, you gotta serve another seven years to get the girl you really want. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sucks. But uh, let's talk about all the performances. Um, I, let's talk about Ruffle Bowes. That's exactly who I want to talk about. Uh, and cause uh, even though there's uh, Bo Bull, I thought she did a really good job as well. I agree. I we'll we'll, we'll talk about well. them too. But Ruffle Bowes, who we've seen one other time, right? Yeah. As far as I know. It was in Dilda Hock and It was Dilda Hock and so, but I've heard about him. I know he's he's known as a thespian. He's known as a performer. This, oof, it, it showed here. It he, I want to see more from him. Yeah. This is this. Even though I liked him in Dilda, but he wasn't like the main thing in Dilda can do that. Right. Kind of kept you going. Yeah. He Not was at all. just like a tiny supporting character. This he really got to shine. Yeah. Especially with his two characters. His character two characters. Yeah. And he made them so believable and so different. Yep. Um, that it was. Obviously, an incredibly difficult scene to watch yeah. in in there, uh, as I'm sure was yeah, typical. So for well him. done, so, so well, well done. The fact that he not only he still reminds me of the um, an actor who I refer to as Count Adamar. He played um, Count Adamar in um, The Knight's Tale, but you know him. He's he's in everything. He looks he looks so much basically like Imran Sh uh, Hashmi. Looks like Colin. Oh Farrell. right, right, right. This guy looks, looks like, like that actor. You've seen him. You know him. Um, but yeah, his his main character that he comes in and he's just this. He's the villain, but Ruffle Bose doesn't play him like no. that. And that's that's once again we've said it many times. Mark of a great actor if you're playing a villain and you don't play them, you just you you just play them like a person. Yeah, the justification for all of your choices are based on the story and the backstory you've created for them. And at this time and place. He did exactly what you would do with this character who lives in these circumstances, who all of his life has had his ego stroked 
everywhere he goes. So he expects things to be a certain way. It's absolutely horrifically egoistic, chauvinistic, patriarchal bullshit. Yeah. But he doesn't judge the character mm -hmm. and makes you um, not like the guy, but at least he what he creates, and it showed his thespianatic muscles, he created full characters for both of the characters. Yeah, the, his re like the character he created for the brother. Yep. We've talked about any time you play somebody with a mental illness, it can come off bad. It's easy to make a bit. It's why the Academy consistently will reward people who play people with some kind of a challenge, whether it's developmental, whether it's physical, because it's extremely difficult to do that and be believable. Yeah, because it could come off as like um, a shtick. It could come off as offensive, yeah, almost. Yeah, an, ins an insulting cliche. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like he didn't do that at not all. Not in the least. He made so many different subtle differences between that character and the other character um, that that sometimes yeah. you you couldn't you couldn't tell. Like that moment when he was he was raping. He was a about to rape her, right? And then he, he kind of switched. Yeah. yeah I, I didn't know what to make of that. I didn't know if like, so this character knows what he's doing. Right. I go, well, I don't know, what you, would you make? Like that moment, cause I, moment, before that I was like, okay, this guy clearly has a mental illness. And yeah. He's doing it. But then he kind of had to switch. Yeah. I didn't know what that was. I didn't know what it was either. And I loved it. Yeah. Because you can tell when he's initially messing around with her he's just playing like mm -hmm. when he's hitting the things and it's hurting her feet he thinks it's funny he doesn't realize she's in pain and then he just wants her attention so he crawls up on top of her and then there's something i don't know if it's the first time he's felt her or seen her as a sex object maybe the first time he's felt that in his life but he's like any man at mm -hmm. that age yeah who's going to have primal things stirred up inside of him and you saw that without again with that I don't think he premeditated that. I think he just went into that and the, applauded the director for the way that the scene was shot. Because what you do see is just that click. Why it clicks, we don't know. But you see him transition from playing to I'm horny. Yeah. 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 And obviously after that moment, um, she uh, either died or she was... Something obviously happened to her. I, my wife said she's... A, at basically she lost her innocence and so at that moment i because you she could kind of and he thought she died right i think i think he did and i don't know if she did or if it was just a uh, like vegetable like state or something like that just because and then basically because her basically innocence had been stolen at that moment the goddess now came in and took over yeah to basically and i thought her transformation from that little girl to this old because i at yeah. first i was like they don't even seem like the same, same person. person. Agreed. At all. And it makes sense now because they're basically not. Basically not. And yeah. that's why he says at one point, he says, you've changed so much. And she's like, you you, you don't even realize. Like, I love when she said, you guys, you are all the same. Yeah. You have no clue what's going on. So, yeah, I think he is the, 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 the peg upon which this door swings that without, without his two role portrayal as strong as it is. A role. Yeah, it, it really changes it. And then she, obviously in the title role. Tripat Tripati? Yeah, is that yeah is, uh, Tripti Dimri. Tripti Dimri. Great job. Yeah, I thought she did a really, really good Great job. Great job. Um, in, in transforming from the younger character into the, um, then I guess, possessed, enlightened, whatever you want to call it. Cause right. It's, it's a lot more complex than that. And, and the complexity lends it, we will always make this comparison. When you make an empathetic monster of any kind, it's gonna go back to us looking at yeah. Guillermo. Um, because it's, I love that, and I love that twist in this. Yeah, the fact that it became basically like a Sherlock Holmes yes. story, yeah. and they're trying to figure out who, who did it. Um, and it was essentially like this big folklore story that basically was true, and it was kind of similar to the Marathi one we just watched in terms of yeah. this goddess mm -hmm. uh, possessed her to take revenge on all these right. awful, awful men. Yeah, I mean, one of the uh, key lines in it, he gets the flashback after everything's burning and he's realizing all of the hints that he'd been given that he missed. And one of them is her line when, when he's, he's talking about the man who did all this and she says, why does it have to be a man? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's a critical, wonderful. Now, I wasn't surprised by the fact that it was her. In no. fact, from the beginning, I'm like, it's probably her the whole time. Yeah, I think everybody kind of. The twist was it being a goddess and not a demon. Mm -hmm. And that I loved that. It was the goddess. Yeah. The goddess is women, all yep. women. Have you seen that video? And again, another wonderful, coincidentally, you know, it's Durga Puja time in Calcutta. I find it so wonderful that this, and, and this takes place in, in and around Calcutta. Um, really, really cool. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is based on a Bengali story. Is it? I, th I believe it is. I, I'm not exactly 100% certain, but I think I heard from a stupid baby, and it may have been a long time ago, that Bulbul Bul is, uh, is based on a Bengali tale. Mm. But correct me if I'm wrong, it would make sense since, they go, since Calcutta is so close. Um, but yeah, the, the, the big twist, not I guess twist, but the, the reveal of when, what she actually did. She, you know, all these people that died were about to do horrific things to the little girl, tub. the guy in the bathtub, which I cheered for. Yeah, it was <laughs> glorious. <laughs> He's like, we're, we're I, so he said something like, um, something stupid, or basically <laughs> something idiotic that basically he was about to rape her, right? right? And then she came in, chopped his neck, <laughs> ripped his neck off, and it was mouth. wonderful. And it was a, I actually got scared at the end because they went a year later, right? And I was like, oh, great, right? Uh, I know you I, I, hate, I hate that, that. <laughs> I, I hate it, yeah. Um, but when it, it was interesting because I thought it was going one way, it was basically he came back into the house, and I was like, it's it's just perpetuating. It's right. just going to keep continuing. Right. He just he only left for a little while. You didn't you didn't kill it off, and then he right. came in. She came in at the end and finished him off, which was fantastic. Very nice. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> yeah. So it was a great. Um, I I I really really enjoyed it. This one is a very easy watch. Very in terms easy of, watch. It's a, an enjoyable, so beautiful. All the watch. performances are good. It's a beautiful film. And it's, um, yeah, you could just watch it just for the visuals. It's just, true. you literally sit there. Oh, and let's give a big shout out. I thought Amit Trivedi's score was hauntingly pretty. Yes. Gorgeous, gorgeous score. And there were times where I'm like, okay, let's see what happens. And they did exactly what you need to do because we've talked about films being overscored. Yeah. This was not overscored. The use of sound that almost sounds, uh, there were many times where the score was blended in with the natural sounds of wind and howling, you know, wolves or an owl or yeah. something like that. And uh, I, I just felt like it was exactly what needed to be done. And then when the final credits roll, we get that haunting violin mm -hmm. melody, which thankfully didn't remind me of any other melody I've ever heard. <laughs> Everything sounded very original. So really wonderful score too. Amar Dost, Amit Trivedi. Yeah, I gave um, everything for me in my, my grading scale, everything in my grading scale. Continuity, editing, sound, everything got an A. There wasn't anything lower than an A, below a 90 on any of my scores for this. Yeah, it was. it's probably one of my favorite films of the year so far. Yeah, I Just agree. in terms of just, everything was good. Everything, from the supporting, we didn't talk about yeah. the, the, the guy that um, yeah. she was in love with as a kid. Yep. That was a really interesting character of, basically, we thought he was gonna be like, her companion, the good one. Right. And he basically turned into, is the one who ends the, the yeah. he basically started perpetuating the patriarchy again yeah and then he basically realized that in the end and he was like i'm leaving i can't i can't continue to be like you yeah i don't want to be like you anymore and then there was other characters like the the one that rahul bose was having the uh, uh, basically the affair with uh, yeah who was in love with her other brother correct such an interesting interesting dynamic, dynamic. <laughs> yeah that, the whole thing yeah uh, but his his character the, uh, the, the trajectory he takes is a really interesting character study in the script and, and the screenwriting because it shows you the susceptibility that everybody has where you could be the kindest person, no sign whatsoever of being patriarchal or being prejudicial or egoistic, but over time you can be conditioned and circumstances can happen and hurts can occur to you that change who you are fundamentally. Yeah. And you start to do things that you then turn around and realize what have I, not just what have I done, but what have I become? I, yeah. I think his characters are really, it's just the, the script is really well written. And then the doctor as well, Yeah, uh, I think. Um, so, Another good character. Um, I think, I, I, I like that Anushka Sharma likes to produce things with a little bit of horror in them. 
I, you could definitely tell that she is into that genre. She produced Patal Lok. She produced yeah. any, any of the, She likes to produce stuff that's a little more gritty. Um, so uh, this uh, this definitely pleasantly surprised me, most especially the cinematography and the lighting. I just there were constant times yeah. I was like, I don't. I oh have my to goodness. go back, and obviously we have three more months left in the month. Um, I but I, mean, I have to go back and see what else. But this is definitely going to be in the at, it's contention. Ebby nominated. Yeah. I can tell you that right it, now. It, for it's cinematography. a very high probability it's going to win. But I, I need to go back and look at all the 70s other films that we've watched this year. So I just don't remember. And there's one <laughs> last thing. This entire thing. Have you ever seen the 80s dating uh, video? Is these guys trying to promote themselves on a dating video service? I don't think so. And this is this guy talking about what he wants. And it's, he, wants, he wants the goddess. I, I I haven't seen that. I'm gonna show everybody. It'll be the end of the review. Here. Okay. Um, By the way, did you recognize um, that character from not not the guy you talked about? There's a character the in doctor. this film. Uh, he was great. From from Kahani. No. Who? Yeah, he played the detective that's helping find everything for her. Um, anyway, you'll go, we'll go down a bunny trail. Never never mind. You, some of you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so an 80s video. This is a legit thing from the 80s. Thought I told you never to call me here. A rose, okay. Um, my name's Doug, and obviously I'm a bit weird, and that's for a good cause. I am not gonna talk about myself. I'm gonna talk about you, and if I talk about you, I think I'm gonna talk about me. I am looking for the goddess. Are you the goddess? Who is the goddess? The goddess is the woman, is a woman, is any woman, is all women who have found themselves, both their left and their right, their good, their bad, their male, their female, it's an androgynous character. On the application for this, there's a question that said age. I said Aquarian. Aquarian is an attitude. Isn't it? Did you smoke something before we started this thing? <laughs> no, there, there's. A, I'll show it to you later. There's a whole compilation of these bad eighty. What does that have to do with the movie? Because he the, said they're talking about the goddess. Talking about the goddess, in that it's a woman, the woman, a woman, all women, and it's true. 